Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to talk to you a little bit about my opinions and impressions of the EA Play conference from E3 2016. So this show was very interesting indeed. It felt a little bit uh, shallow to me, I'll be completely honest. We'll get into exactly why in just a moment, but it definitely felt quite shallow. A lot of the things that they showed off, I already knew about Barring, of course, things like EA Originals and the game Fee or Fey, whatever it's called. And of course, they then confirmed that there is a Star Wars game coming out in 2018. There's also a Star Wars Battlefront game coming out next year in 2017. But again, we'll get to that in just a moment. So, the show opened in the traditional way. Someone comes onto the stage and says some stuff and some words that no one really cares about. And they move on to eventually show us Titanfall 2. They announced that Titanfall 2 is going to be multi-platform on uh, PS4 and Xbox One and, of course, PC. Which is, of course, again, something that we already knew. Suddenly, we're into Titanfall gameplay. And it's much more of the same, really. They announced there's six new Titans. There's grappling hooks. There's uh, going to be a multiplayer technical test before the game launches. But yeah, it's it's basically more of the same Titanfall multiplayer that we already know and that I already love. I really, really enjoyed Titanfall 1's multiplayer. I thought it was absolutely excellent. I thought it was a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to it. When I say it's more of the same, that's not really a bad thing. That's actually a good thing because I thought Titanfall's multiplayer was just stellar. I really did. It was a lot of fun. I will say I have a lot of criticisms of it. It got very samey. There were some maps that were not worth playing. And really, in all of the weapons that you had in the game, which wasn't very many to begin with, you really were better off just using something like the base carbine or the car SMG. You could maybe get away with one of the snipers and, of course, the smart pistol as well, which was heavily criticized by some and then praised by others. It was a very interesting and divisive weapon. But uh, generally, Titanfall 1, solid multiplayer. I think it was an excellent concept, but it was a poorly executed game in other ways because, of course, it didn't have a single-player campaign. It was a multiplayer only, and that was kind of it. It was a very shallow but very enjoyable game, in my opinion. Titanfall 2 looks like a lot more of the same, which is a good thing because it's building off of something that has very good mechanics, the movement's great, the gunplay's great, the titans are interesting. Like I said, six new titans. So, it's going to be interesting to see what comes of Titanfall 2. I'm very, very excited for Titanfall 2. And then they revealed that there is single player in Titanfall 2, which is going to be either a bit of a hit or a complete miss. I don't think there's going to be a middle ground for that because very much in the way that uh, Call of Duty single players are like Marmite, you either love them and play them or don't touch them at all. I think the same is going to come of Titanfall single player. I do think a lot more people will dive into it because Titanfall 1 didn't have a single player, but I don't know that a lot of people will finish it if it ends up just being a bit of a generic uh, FPS single player experience, especially with Call of Duty Infinite Warfare being set in a sort of space age-ish thing as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see what comes of Titanfall 2 and single player, but at least for the multiplayer, I am very, very excited to uh, play some more of that and get back into that style of gameplay. Moving on from Titanfall, they went on to talk about Madden 17. We're going to move on from Madden 17 because I couldn't care less about it, and we're going to talk about Mass Effect Andromeda, which is the next thing that came up in the conference. So Mass Effect Andromeda looks to be... Another Mass Effect game, shock and horror. I know, ladies and gentlemen, it is a shocking thing that a Mass Effect game would be a Mass Effect game. But there are a couple of things I noticed during the conference that I thought were worth noting, which is that the point of this game is to leave the Milky Way, go to the Andromeda Galaxy, and find a new place for humanity to settle. They mentioned during the conference that this means there's a bunch of new species and locations and technologies and all that kind of stuff. Which, uh, for some, might be raising some red flags, because I know that Mass Effect is a beloved franchise. It's a bit controversial because of the ending of Mass Effect 3, but generally it is a well-established and beloved franchise with characters and species that people know and care about. 
So this game is effectively the Halo 4 of the Mass Effect franchise, in that you have the original trilogy, which is its own self-contained story, and then you have this other one that came along and is going to be something very, very different, while still trying to sort of be the same. So I think Mass Effect Andromeda has the potential to be quite divisive or out of this world, if you'll excuse the pun. I, I think it's going to be a very interesting title to pay attention to because it could introduce a lot of new things. And they were mentioning that you are going to find this new place for humanity, which is kind of making me think that there might be some exploration in here. I noticed a couple of other things that just made me think that Mass Effect Andromeda might be pulling from some of the other space-based games that we have at the moment, such as things like Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen, in that you're going to have this big open universe. Uh, possibly games like No Man's Sky as well, where you sort of explore and discover things in that regard. It'll be interesting to see what comes of it, but they really didn't show all that much. It was actually quite disappointing, because we've known about Mass Effect Andromeda for quite some time, and I'm worried that this game is going to go the same way as The Division, in that we knew about The Division for a very long time, and then when it eventually came out, the hype had sort of been overwhelming and the game was then underwhelming as a result so it's gonna be very very interesting to see what comes of mass effect andromeda but it does have me interested in it i am excited for it and i want to go back and play through the entire original mass effect trilogy as a result of seeing andromeda so props to them for that and i guess props to ea for giving the mass effect games for free on origin access there you go, there's a plug for you, EA. We moved on from Mass Effect Andromeda to talk briefly about the Play to Give program, which is basically a charity giving thing for participation within a game event. It's very strange. One of them mentioned was if you play a strong female character in a, one of these Star Wars games, then there's some kind of charitable donation or contribution from EA. I really don't know what it was. It seemed very confusing and very vague, so I'm not really sure what that is going to be. I don't know how it works, but charity is charity, so it's probably a good thing. Uh, we moved on from that to basically mention that, uh, I don't think they mentioned it, but it was mentioned somewhere that Mass Effect Andromeda will be out in early 2017. And then from that, we went on to talk about FIFA 17 for 20 bloody minutes. Yeah. It was kind of remarkable that they talked about FIFA for so long. I, I, honestly, I was baffled by this. It was remarkable. I, I watched this in awe of the simple fact that they went so long about FIFA. I guess FIFA is a big thing, but I feel like the people watching this conference and the people at E3 probably don't care about FIFA. So... It was a bit strange, and it was very much in the EA style of, it's it's innovation, it's evolutionary, revolutionary, and everything else that ends in ooshinary. It was a very typical EA presser for a, an upcoming FIFA game. It was changing the game again. It had all new mechanics, and it was all new on the Frostbite engine, which I feel is being underused in this regard because it's a football game. Unless they have Levolution in FIFA 17, I couldn't care less. And it doesn't look like they do. We moved on from that to then talk about EA Originals, which is basically a program where EA will be working with smaller game companies to basically publish their games, I assume. I assume they'll be publishing them on Origin because that would make sense. Uh, they were talking about the success of Unravel sort of inspiring this, and I guess they then decided that with Unravel being quite a success and Unravel having a very nervous man on stage, they would then bring out another nervous man to talk about his game, which is called Fee, or Fay or Fe. I don't know. It's spelled F-E. That's it. So, interesting title. Probably not going to be great to find in... Google searches or YouTube searches, because if you type in FE, it's going to try and autocorrect it to whatever the full word would be, whatever that may be. Whatever the case, the game does look interesting. It looks to be some kind of puzzle platformer where you play as some little angly, angular, spiky cub thing, and it has something to do about music. 
I don't know. It looks like an interesting game. I'm not sure about the art, art style, and I just don't know that it's necessarily for me. So there you go. That's my thoughts on that game. We then moved on from that, and we talked about Star Wars for about three minutes. This was possibly the most disappointing part of this entire conference because they kind of very briefly just go, oh yeah, by the way, there's a new Battlefront next year. And then there's this game from Visceral Games, which is probably coming out in 2018. Then there's Respawn working on a thing. And then Respawn's exploring another element, by the way, of a third person shooter. Then the Respawn game is being made by former God of War people. Like there's a lot of information coming out very quickly. Like it was a very, there was no space, spectacular announcement for a Battlefront game next year. There was no spectacle or explosions or pyro or lights or anything. I mean, there weren't any, any explosions or pyro in, in general, uh, but there was nothing. It was, it was very just off the cuff. Like, hey, there's a Battlefront game next year. Then there's like a visceral action adventure game coming eventually. Then there's a respawn one coming eventually. And then what they did was they had EA Star Wars A Look Ahead which was just, I thought it would be a behind the scenes and you'd see like rough gameplay and you did see some of that. You saw some like pre-alpha renders and cinematics and stuff like that and just some interesting things. Lando Calrissian and Bespin are coming to Battlefront. That's cool. They also mentioned that next year's Battlefront game will have stuff from the new movies or at least The Force Awakens. So that's also kind of cool, but it was really underwhelming. We know that there's eventually going to be a visceral Star Wars game. We've known that for a while. I think we've known that Respawn are doing one for a while. It was leaked that Battlefront's coming out next year again. So, I don't know. It just, it felt really underwhelming. It really, really was. They said that, you know, there's many studios across the world working in Star Wars games, but we didn't see any of them. They said 2017 has this, 2018 has that. And then beyond that, who knows? So, it seems like EA are either really sitting on the Star Wars thing and not wanting to let it go, or they're being really clever and legitimately making good Star Wars games. The problem is we don't know because they are just not telling us anything. Moving on from Star Wars, we talked about Battlefield 1. And let me say something, Battlefield 1, it, this is the first time in a long time I have been remarkably excited for a sort of big AAA shooter. I was interested in The Division. Destiny looked kind of cool, but I had, I haven't really been interested in a Battlefield or Call of Duty game in a big way in a long time. Infinite Warfare, meh. But, 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 Battlefield 1 looks incredible. It really, really looks incredible. The trailers, are fantastic. And then watching the post show where you had the live Battlefield gameplay, it looks like an absolutely incredible game. I don't know why they spent 20 minutes on FIFA and didn't just spend the entire conference in Battlefield 1. Because I thought going into this, I was watching the Twitch chat and it was filled with Rip Cod, rest in peace, Call of Duty. And I thought that was stupid. I really did. I was just looking at it going, oh, it's one of those memes that everyone posts in Twitch chat. It's kind of dumb and immature and pointless. Afterwards, I joined in. I I joined in and put Ripcord in the chat as much as I could possibly do it until I got timed out. Because honestly, Battlefield 1 looks like something new. It looks like it is actually pushing the boat out a little bit and going, we've sort of dosed a bite with the same ideas for a very long time. Let's actually do something different. Because obviously, We've all known that Call of Duty was doing, everyone was doing modern stuff for a while. Everything was a modern military shooter. And then it's like, okay, the next step is gonna be the future. And it did. And then it's like, okay, so basically the next game from Call of Duty is gonna be like Halo. And then it was, and, or it's gonna be, sorta. But then Battlefield is like, yo, let's not do what everyone thinks we're gonna do. Let's go and do a World War One game which even EA was skeptical about. And then you look at it and this looks like an incredible game. It really does. The destruction looks amazing. The levels are sort of, they, they adapt like when the, the giant airship Zeppelin balloon blimp thing comes down, it's the wreckage stays in the map and you can use it as cover and you have to get around it and play the game 
and change up your playstyle based on that and the destruction and the weather and it looks like an actual next generation game three years into this console generation so it looks remarkable i'm so excited for battlefield one i really really am outside of that that was kind of it like i said everything ea showed off we already knew about we knew battlefield was coming we knew mass effect was coming we knew more star wars was coming we knew everything was coming we knew fifa and madden were obviously coming out um there were some cringe worthy moments i thought the pre-show was absolutely terrible and they briefly had jamie fox and zach efron who were talking to the hype man from the pre-show and they looked bored as hell it was really really interesting i mean you did also get some clips of terry cruz and snoop dogg playing battlefield one and they genuinely looked quite interested there were some other celebrities playing battlefield one and when they were playing it they looked legitimately interested but it was just quite clear that no one was there to talk with ea they wanted to play the game so i guess with that said ladies and gents the ea play conference showed very little gameplay didn't really give all that much information outside of what we already knew and was generally quite lackluster but if i take anything away from it it is that it can only go up from here and that battlefield one looks incredible with that in mind thank you again for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye